work that I'm going to present has been conducted together with uh, Magnus Eck, Jens Nielsen, and Bjorn Paulsen. And we are, uh, so we're all associated uh, with CHARMEC, which stands for Chalmers Railway uh, Mechanics. So it's a research center uh, in Sweden uh, of, uh, of railways. And uh, today uh, I will present uh, the, uh, yeah, the research about the turnouts that we conduct. Um, and the reason for this uh, research is the high maintenance of uh, the turnouts, so high that every year in Sweden between uh, 40 and 45 million euros is spent annually on their maintenance, uh, according to the uh, Swedish Transfer Administration in 2014. And um, what is the switch? Uh, so you, you can see that it's comprised of the switching panel, switch panel, the closure panel, and the crossing panel. So th this entire thing is, is a torn out. And um, uh, today I will focus on the particular part of the uh, crossing panel, uh, the crossing nose, which is here. So let's zoom in to that place. And uh, we see that uh, when the wheel travels uh, in the facing move, it goes down the wing rail until it hits the crossing nose and it starts to climb it up. So uh, th this is the uh, top view of the situation. So it, it, the, uh, the wheel travels like that and then at some point it finds the, uh, the crossing nose and starts to travel on the crossing nose. So there is an impact load at that place. And, um, you know, there, there are various wheel profiles, uh, that's why this uh, slope is needed. And um, uh, since the wheel profiles vary, they all have different transition point. So the place where uh, the wheel is shifted to the crossing nose. So uh, th this is called a transition zone, and it's hap it happens uh, roughly uh, after uh, 400 up to 700 millimeter after the uh, theoretical crossing point. Yes, uh, so to deal with the, uh, with the prediction of damage and degradation in, in this crossing nose, uh, a methodology has been developed at Chalmers, and uh, it consists of uh, four steps. In the first step, uh, we simulate the dynamics, so we simulate the uh, train passing the turnout, and it gives us the uh, position and the magnitude of the uh, impact forces. Having that, we move uh, to the second step, which is a uh, simulation of a contact. And for that, we use a metamodel of, uh, that accounts for elastoplastic material behavior. Um, and uh, it provides us with the contact patch size and the uh, maximum contact pressure. And the, the meta model is Hirschian based, so it assumes an uh, elliptic uh, contact. Yes, uh, and also uh, the meta model uh, provides us with the uh, maximum von Mises stress, and I'll tell later why. Okay, uh, and then the third step so, having the, uh, you know, the contact patch size and the contact pressure, we can uh, assess the damage, and for us, damage is thus far is uh, plastic deformation and wear. So we do not account for the uh, rolling contact fatigue just yet in the methodology. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we perform a plastic calculation, which is a finite element analysis and the wear, but I, I will get into more details later. And then the final steps is that we up update the profiles uh, we perform uh, the smoothing uh, of the profile change, and then uh, yeah, the, uh, we, we do many iterations of this methodology. Yep. So in the first step, in the simulation of dynamics, we account for this uh, stochastic distribution of certain parameters, and we do that using uh, the Latin hypercube sampling. And what are the parameters that we uh, or the variables that we vary. Uh, it's uh, wheel profiles, so we have a set of measured wheel, wheel profiles. Uh, we have 276 uh, in this study. 
And then the second parameter is the vehicle speed. So we assume a normal distribution of, uh, of a vehicle with the uh, mean of 160 kilometers an hour and the standard deviation of five kilometers an hour. So, and for each simulation, we plug one number from the normal distribution, you know, and we have 276 in total. Um, and the third, uh, the last um, variable is the wheel rail friction coefficient. Um, we also assume a normal distribution with mean 0 0.35. Yep, so having these, we run the simulations, and these are the typical results. Uh, we see uh, on the y-axis, this is a lateral position, and on the x-axis, this is a longitudinal position, so the distance from the theoretical crossing point, TCP, in millimeters. So we get information like, where is the first contact point located? So we said we have 276 simulations in one run, um, in one run of the methodology loop. And then uh, we see that, okay, around 25 millimeter, around 400 millimeter in the longitudinal direction, uh, there is the most common uh, uh, transition point. And then also we have uh, the information about, you know, the, uh, the load history. So the, uh, here it's, uh, uh, the maximum normal load is plotted. So we see that the normal load gets higher uh, further down the crossing nose, but it doesn't mean the pressure, because you, know, you have to divide by the area, so actually the area is, uh, yeah, is larger there, so the pressure is not that high. Yep. Okay, uh, so we skip the contact due to time restriction, we skip the contact uh, step, and we will talk about the plasticity. Uh, so we, as an input, we get the contact patch width, and as I said, the, it's a Hirschhorn-based uh, model of contact, so we have this uh, semi-axis B, uh, so we have the double the semi-axis, so the full axis, it's the, uh, in the lateral direction, so we take the, the size, and we take, um, the material models, uh, and f in, in this study we chose uh, R350HT and the uh, rolled manganese. Uh, yeah, usually it's explosive manganese that is used in the crossings, but we, we had the taste, test data for the uh, rolled manganese, so then we used that. And then we used the uh, contact pressure distribution from the, from the meta model, and we adjust this uh, pressure such that it matches the von Mises stress from the contact model because uh, to reduce the computational time, the plasticity, we do it for the cross section, so in 2D. So to match uh, the uh, 3D case, we have to do something. So we chose to match the same level of maximum von Mises stress to adjust the load to such that it ma matches the maximum von Mises stress in the cross section. Okay. And then we have to decide on the, uh, what we call the load sequence, which is basically we have our 276 uh, train passages. Okay, so it's, for us it's 276 load cycles, and that constitutes a sequence. We call it a sequence. Uh, and then we decide on the load history. So we say, okay, let's repeat that sequence 150 times, and that will give us a load history in one iteration of the methodology. Okay, um, so we said we need uh, these uh, models, uh, the material models, so we, uh, we chose, uh, uh, we had um, Mar uh, Martin Schilke perform these uh, experiments uh, for uh, the cyclic uh, tests uh, for the two materials, and you see that um, in blue, this is the experiment, and in red, this is the simulation, so we adopt we calibrate our model, and you see that for the manganese steel, we cannot capture the, if, uh, the initial cycles that well, uh, but the ratcheting behavior, which is the uh, accumulation of the uh, strain in the direction of the mean stress, we can capture it quite well. Okay, and you see the difference between the two materials, that for instance, at 1% strain, uh, you get double the stress for R350HT. Okay, so the, these are the uh, results, the unscaled ones uh, in red and blue. This is the deformed profile after the 150 loads uh, cycle, uh, sequences, which is uh, around 0.8 megagross ton of traffic, which is around two weeks of traffic for, uh, for a turnout in Sweden. 
And to, to quantify the results, so we can uh, plot the maximum nodal displacement. And um, you see the picture on the left. We plot it for each cycle uh, of the first um, uh, sequence. And on the right, we pl plot for different sequences. So every dot here encompasses a plot like that inside. Um, and you see that for, for manganese, certain due to material behavior, certain uh, load scenarios, uh, they give a jump, uh, a big jump, a big plastic deformation. But for R350 HD, it's not that uh, it's smoother. It's not that uh, drastic. And um, you should also uh, note that um, in overall, the manganese shows roughly three and a half times uh, larger deformation displacement here, and uh, that around 50 to 70, depending on the material, um, uh, sequence, load sequences need to be resolved before you get a stabilized response. And by st stabilized, I mean linear. So you can continue saying that, okay, we, we can just uh, assume that the same rate will be uh, kept. Okay, and finally, the where we have. Uh, we have performed wear simulation using our chart wear model uh, uh, together with uh, fast seam. And the material uh, data are usually provided by the wear maps. For our materials, we couldn't find any. But luckily, in Austria, there is a, in a place called Niklasdorf, uh, there was an explosively hardened uh, crossing so that uh, they were able to provide us with the average wear rate. So the R chart model, this uh, uh, wear coefficient uh, divided by the hardness. This material parameter was calibrated uh, to to the observed average wear rate, but no wear rate uh, wear data was found. Were found for R350 HD. To sum it up, uh, we performed the simulations of plasticity and wear after 0 0.8 uh, megros ton of traffic. And uh, we observed uh, that there is less ratcheting strain for the crossing made of R350 HT, uh, but with a higher rate. So it uh, keeps catching up with the manganese, you know. And uh, for, for the uh, manganese, uh, the wear was about 2% of the plastic deformation uh, for the amount of load we consider. And uh, we're still lacking for the uh, data for the R350 HT. Uh, in the future, we plan to simulate, uh, uh, to resolve more loads. So right now I presented you uh, the results of just one iteration of the methodology. And uh, yeah, we plan to, to do more. And what we are planning to investigate is the sensitivity of the simulation of dynamics. So if the order of the uh, loads matters, uh, or to how extent it matters, and the uh, number of cycles. So perhaps we don't need to resolve all of them, but only those that contribute most to the uh, plastic deformation or the damage development. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.